Hi, this is Mark from SimpleElectronicsCourses.com and today I'd like to talk a little bit about mathematics for electronics. I think a lot of people have a hang up with math, especially when dealing with electronics. I think it holds a lot of people back and I think that's kind of a shame. I don't think it really needs to be. So let's dig in a little bit and we'll uh, see if we can take care of some of the mysteries of math. Well, I think part of the problem is people have a hang up with exponents. Let's say something like 10 to the third or 10 cubed is 10 times 10 times 10, which is the same as, let's see, 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000. 10 to the first power is just 10 all by itself. 10 to the zeroth power, which I don't think a lot of people know, is 1. So let's say we've got 10 to the sixth. That would be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. I think that's 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yep. Which is equal to 1 million. Now look at this. We've got six zeros there, which matches the six up there. Likewise, 10 to the third has three zeros. That's not by accident. Okay, now let's get a little more, uh, a little fancier here, and uh, let's look at ten to the minus third. Well, the minus just means that it's one over ten to the third, which would be one over ten times ten times ten, which is one over. 1,000, which is 1,000th, which is the same as that. I should probably put a zero out there, 0 0.001. Now, you'll notice to get from like 1.0, from where the decimal point normally is, we have to go three places, one, two, three. That's how we get the minus three. So with positive numbers, you can move them one way, and negative numbers you can move them another way. So we'll uh, talk more about that in just a minute. But let's uh, let's talk about maybe multiplying them. Let's say we've got 10 squared times 10 cubed. Well, that's 10 times 10. That's for that times 10 times 10 times 10. And that is for 10 cubed, which is 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We've got 10 to the 5th. Now you'll notice that 5 is 2 plus 3. So when we multiply exponents of 10, all we have to do is add together their exponents. So let's say, for example, we've got 10 to the 23 times 10 to the 4th is equal to, no, I'm not going to write out 23 tens. It's going to be 10 to the 27th. Now, let's take this one step further here. Let's divide them. Let's go with 10 to the 6th divided by 10 squared. Well, this is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yep, over 10 times 10. So if we got something in the numerator and denominator, that's the same as 1, so we'll cross those out. And we end up with 10, 1, 2, 3, 4 to the 4th. And you'll notice that 4 is 6 minus 2. So when we're dividing 10 to some powers, we can subtract the exponents from one another. Now one thing, to kind of tie everything together is pretty cool. Let's say we have 1 over 10 to the third. Well that's the same as 10 to the 0, remember I said 10 to the 0 is 1, over 10 to the third is 10 to the 
0 minus 3, which is 10 to the minus third. So there, we've just kind of proven the, the thing we were talking about a minute ago. So let's uh, move onward and up here, upward here. OK, now let's talk about prefixes that are used. I think you've probably seen these before, especially with metric system stuff. So let's talk about prefixes. And this is because we don't want to always say times 10 to the 6th or times 10 to the 9th. So we've got special prefixes we'll use. Like for example, Terra, which we quite often you use just a T for, is for 10 to the 12th. Giga, or G, is 10 to the 9th. Mega, or M, is usually 10 to the 6th. Kilo is 10 to the third. And then just to be consistent, let's have our units, which would be like whatever it is we're talking about, you know, whether it be ohms or farads or hertz or whatever. And going the other way, we've got milli, which is a small m, which is 10 to the minus third. And we have micro which is the Greek letter mu, which is 10 to the minus sixth. Then we have nano, which is an n, which is 10 to the minus ninth. Pico, which is 10, oh, pardon me, which is p, which is 10 to the minus twelfth. And femto, which, to be honest with you, I had to look up because I couldn't remember, is 10 to the minus 15th. I don't use it much. And you'll notice that quite often for the things that are um, exponents that are negative, we use lowercase. And for those that are large, we use uppercase, except for k. And those you'll kind of see go both ways. Um, usually k for kilo is, is a lowercase. So um, how do we use these? Well, we'll say something like, a resistor is 10 kilo ohms, which means it's 10 times 10 to the third ohms, which is the same as 10 to the fourth ohms, which is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is 10,000. And after a while, you get to the point where you can just kind of convert these in your head. Now, this usually means thousands, that's millions. Um, that's uh, billions, 10 to the ninth. So uh, let's uh, move on here. And let's talk about uh, converting them back and forth. So let's say, for instance, you have 3 mega ohms. And you want to talk about that in kilo ohms. So how do we get there? Well. Mega is 10 to the 6th. Kilo is 10 to the 3rd. So we've got a difference of 3. And there are uh, kilos are smaller. So there's a bunch of kilos in a mega. So, and there's uh, 3 different in the exponents. So it's a difference by, by 1,000. So this would be 3,000. We've got Three here because that's pardon me that's six minus three give us three and so this is equal to three thousand kilo ohms. Let's say we wanted to go a different way. Let's say we had four hundred and seventy kilo ohms and we want to talk about that in mega ohms. Well. We're going the other way now, so we need to move the decimal point 3 in the other way, because we're talking about 3. 6 minus 3 is 3. So we'll take this 470, and we'll move the decimal point 3 places. 1, 2, 3. And we end up with point 0.470 mega ohms is the same as 470 kilo ohms. 
So it helps if you can kind of get an idea of, of if your result's going to be have a larger number or a smaller number. Because remember that kilos are smaller than megas, then this here has to be something bigger. There's a bunch of the kilos to be one mega. There's a trick I learned a long time ago when it comes to converting stuff back and forth that I'd like to share with you now. Let's say we have three mega ohms. We draw a line like this, and let's say we want this end up this ending up to be in kilo ohms. Not one kilo ohm, but just kilo ohms. Well, if you write on the bottom here mega ohms, and you always put the the uh, what you're trying to get rid of on the opposite side of this horizontal line. Because that way they cancel out, just like it's division. So here we cancel out this and this. Then we have to figure out what is the relationship between kilo ohms and mega ohms. We need to put make this so the top and the bottom are the same. Well, 1,000 kilo ohms is the same as 1 mega ohm. So then we multiply the things across the top and divide it by the things across the bottom. We get 3, and we cross out the mega because that's taken care of with that. 3 times 1,000 over 1 is 3,000, and we still have our kilo ohms here, kilo ohms. Let's look at that other example we did where we had 470 kilo ohms and we want to put that into mega ohms. So we will put on the bottom down here kilo ohms and up here we want our answer in mega ohms, so we'll put that up here and we'll put that 1000 kilo ohms is the same as 1 mega ohm. So we'll cancel out these and our answer is 470 divided by 1,000 mega ohms, which is, if we move three places, one, two, three, we get 0.47 mega ohms. So uh, hopefully that's helped a little bit. You know, we uh, you'll end up seeing things like uh, uh, calculating like R times C. Let's go to another page and look at this real quick. There, oops, sorry about that. There are plenty of places where we need to use these in calculations. There's something called tau that's used quite often, which is just R times C. So let's say we have a 1 kilo ohm resistor. And we multiply that times a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Well, this is actually 1 times 10 to the third times 0.1 times 10 to the minus sixth. So if we multiply this times that, we get 0.1 times, if we take 10 to the third and end it, add it to 10, or I mean multiply it times 10 to the minus sixth, we end up with 3 plus a minus 6 would be a minus 3. So that would be 10 to the minus third. And is gives us a, some, something in seconds, so it's 0.1 milliseconds, which is 0.1 milliseconds. Now, don't be confused by the the tau stuff here, and the, uh, the all of a sudden we get seconds out of r times c. Uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about that another day. So, hopefully this helps a little bit. Math is nothing that you should be afraid of. And uh, if you have any questions or want more information like this and more information about electronics please come visit simpleelectronicscourses.com. Thank you much. Bye-bye.